before we introduce the analytical mathematical derivation for the gain, let us define the differential gain. The differential gain is defined as the differential output over the differential input. So we can say A, which is the differential gain, is equal to the partial derivative of V out, which is the differential output voltage, over the differential input alpha VD. So alpha V out over alpha VD is the differential gain, but we know that the output voltage is V out 2 minus V out 1, then we can say that the differential gain is defined as alpha V out 2 minus V out 1 over the differential input, which is alpha of Vn2 minus Vn1. So this is the mathematical definition of the differential gain. Basically, what that means is if we change the differential input voltage, the differential output voltage should also change. Now the ratio of the differential output voltage over the differential input voltage is the differential gain. So how much the output changes relative to the change in the input is the differential gain. Now we are ready to do the analytical, which means mathematical, derivation of the differential gain. Now there is two major methods that are used to define the differential gain. One is called the large signal analysis and the other one is the small signal analysis or the AC gain. So let's look at method one which is the large signal analysis. Basically the differential gain is defined using the transistor's current equations. And for simplicity, we will assume lambda, which is the channel modulation index, to be zero. So we know the results here is approximated. In fact, as technology advances and the transistor feature size gets smaller and smaller, lambda becomes more dominant. And other important parameters, such as the tunneling of the gate, which means that the CMOS start to behave as a bipolar transistor because there will be a current flowing through the gate. That current becomes very large nowadays for the digital circuits. The analog circuits still use bigger feature size so they are not as problematic as the digital circuits. Some of the challenges today arise when we use mixed signal design when we interface digital circuits with analog circuits in the same IC chip because nowadays everybody uses system on chip to reduce cost which means that analog circuits are built adjacent to digital circuits on the same wafer so there will be problems that arise and there is a few companies who are leaders in this technology and many of these companies provide fabless manufacturing which means that they will do the design and then send it to the companies who will do the fabrication these terms are very important nowadays in Silicon Valley and around the globe where people would like to design circuits on the computer only and then they sell it to customers so customers can go and fabricate these circuits and there is numerous companies that you can refer to based on your preference to go back to our topic here, we are interested in defining the differential gain using large signals, which means the transistor's current equations. So we know that the output voltage V out 1 for transistor 1 will equal to VDD minus ID1 times RD. And we also know that VO2 will equal to VDD minus ID2 times RD. Now keep in mind that this is for all voltages and currents, the AC signal and the DC signal together, we call it the large signal analysis. This is the overall equation. Then we can define delta V out here. So let's pay attention to the definition, delta V out to equal to V out 2 minus V out 1. This is basically the differential output voltage. 
right? So delta V out is basically V out 2 minus V out 1. Then we can say that delta V out will equal to V out 2 minus V out 1, which is basically ID2 minus ID1 times RD. We substituted for V out 2 and V out 1 in the delta V out equation and the VDD terms cancels out. Remember, the condition is VD is not zero, which means V1 doesn't equal V2. That means I1 is not equal to I2. It doesn't have to be. Then we can say that let delta ID to equal to ID2 minus ID1. Then delta V out will equal to delta ID times RD. I substituted for ID2 minus ID1 in term of delta ID. That's all what we did. Now we would like to define the differential input delta Vn to equal to Vn2 minus Vn1. Then the differential gain is given as alpha of delta V out over alpha of delta V in, and that will equal to alpha of delta ID over alpha of delta V in times RD. All what I did here is I substituted for delta V out to equal to delta ID times RD. But also, we know that the source Vs is the same for both transistors. Since Vs is the same for both transistors, then we can say that Vn2 minus Vn1, which is basically the differential input voltage delta Vn, is nothing but Vgs2 minus Vgs1, because the sources are the same.